close attention when I say this. Now listen to me very carefully. If there's anything that comes from my mouth that you listen to and absorb today, let it be what I'm about to say. Ready? Do not try any of these survival tricks at home or out in the wild. Seriously, don't. That is, unless you want to be in our second installment of 10 Dumbest Ways to Die. Now, before we get to the 10 survival myths that will kill you, I want to see a comment below from each of you promising that you won't try any of these survival tips. And I guess while you're down there, hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of videos on things you can do at home. Number 10. Cut and suck the poison from a snake bite. You've probably watched an on-screen actor cut into a snake bite and immediately start sucking the blood from the wound. I need you to suck this wound in my shoulder. No, no, no. I, I... I don't put my lips on another man's shoulder, that's very gay. But try to remember that Hollywood isn't the best place to get survival tips. This method of <clears throat> treatment is actually more dangerous than helpful. It's unlikely that you'll actually suck any venom out, but you do greatly increase the risk of infection. And if you do happen to extract some venom, expect some unpleasant side effects. The best thing you can do is remain calm. Let the wound bleed and sanitize and cover it until you can reach proper medical attention. Number nine, GPS devices are infallible. GPS imperfections aren't uncommon, but they're far more of a danger than a nuisance if they start to pop up while you're out in the wilderness. While it's beneficial to have a GPS as a supporting device, it shouldn't be your only reference for direction. Why? Well, beyond potential signal interruption, what if the battery dies or the screen cracks? You're going to wish you had a compass or map to help steer you home instead. Number eight, play dead during a bear attack. If this is your only deterrent when it comes to bear attacks, you won't really have to play dead, if you know what I mean. It may work against mother grizzlies simply defending their cubs, but if you're facing a predatory bear or one that's less defensive and more offensive, the best thing you can do is fight back. Use whatever is at your disposal to strike it and hopefully you'll hit the beast just right. Bears that are on the defense will make a lot of noise, giving you a chance to back off, while hungry predators are more stealthy in their movements. Number seven, moss grows on the north side. You're lost, but know that if you trek north, you'll find the main road. But without a compass, how do you know which direction is north? Some may tell you to look at moss growth on trees, as moss always grows on the north side. Uh, yeah, well, those same people would be just as doomed as you, however, as moss doesn't just grow on the north side. In the southern hemisphere, moss actually grows on the south side of trees, but neither rule is a guarantee. Moss will grow where it's shady to avoid being dried out, so it's possible that, in a heavily wooded area, moss may grow on any side of a tree and on your dead corpse because you didn't listen to this video. Number six, swim parallel to the shore. I mean, if you're caught up in a rip current, you can swim parallel to the shore, but that's not necessarily going to save your life. In most cases, it may, so long as the rip current is pulling you straight out into the ocean. That's not always the case with these currents though, specifically with a diagonal rip current. To avoid becoming fatigued and making absolutely no progress, swim perpendicular to the flow of the current, typically with the prevailing wind. If you're finding it incredibly easy to swim, change direction immediately because you're then swimming with the current. Number five, drink raw blood. Oh, gross. Nothing about this sounds appetizing, nor does it sound very plausible. But at some point, it was apparently acceptable to drink blood as a water replacement. Though consuming raw animal blood may help keep you hydrated, it comes with a few risks, some of which may be deadly. Ultimately, you don't know what's flowing through the bloodstream, and drinking blood raw could result in you contracting pathogens that may be harmless to animals, but deadly to humans. Number four, boiling water guarantees that it's drinkable. Well, yes, in some instances, this is true, but you have to be 100% sure that the water source you're pulling from is clean and free of any harmful chemicals. 
Imagine being lost in the wilderness of, say, Flint, Michigan, when you come across a stream of water. I would bet that boiling that water, while effective in killing the bacteria within it, would not make it any safer to drink. While boiling water does kill bacteria, it does practically nothing to remove unwanted compounds such as heavy metals, arsenic, and other dangerous elements and chemicals. Number three, liquor will warm you. Sure, a quick shot of whiskey will send a warming sensation through your body, but it's not the type of sensation that will save you from freezing to death. Actually, drinking alcohol will have the opposite effect and can accelerate your demise. Though you'll feel warm, alcohol causes blood to rush to the surface of your skin, which pulls warmth and vital blood flow from your internal organs. There's also, of course, the issue of dulling your senses and immune system, which are pretty much the only things keeping you alive. But there's also evidence to suggest that a certain level of alcohol can slow down heat loss and prolong survival in cold conditions, as seen in the case of Charles Jockin, a drunken baker who survived the sinking of the Titanic. Either way, I wouldn't bet your life on it. Number two, build a fire in a cave. <coughs> it sounds like a plausible idea. Keep warm and keep your fire away from the elements by building it under a natural rocky overhang or within a cave. Outside of no proper ventilation to keep smoke from building up, a fire within a cave will undoubtedly warm the rock that makes up the ceiling. As it warms, the water inside will evaporate, causing the rock to crack in spots. Uh, it doesn't sound dangerous, but what happens when that rock starts to splinter and collapse? You'll be trapped under it, having learned your lesson a little too late. Number one, eat snow for hydration. When snow melts, it leaves behind a slushy liquid, puddles of muddy water. So if you're ever incredibly thirsty and dehydrated, eating snow will give you the water you need, right? Wrong. It can actually cause you to be even more dehydrated. Snow is a solid, and your body's going to be looking for a liquid. So when you consume snow, it'll be forced to melt the snow to liquefy it. The problem is, that process takes energy, which will wind up dehydrating you even further. Rather than eat the snow, collect it and melt it down to water, and then consume it. Thanks for watching. Remember, do not try any of these survival tricks at home or out in the wild. But here's something you can do anytime with complete safety to help you survive the day. Watch two more videos from the archives.